And this is the biggest golden corral I have ever seen in my life. This thing is absolutely giant and it's brand new. So let's go eat the living crap out of their stuff. Joel Hanson here, here my good friend, Mr. Alex. Alex, Miami gentleman himself, longtime follower, supporter of the channel. And at that, thanks for all the support, man. Much appreciated, guys. And a uh, cool place about getting around, getting to see places, posting my travels, and I get to meet awesome people. Uh, and today we're heading to Golden Corral. That is right, guys, the Corral. You know my relationship with the Corral, guys. I love the Corral. We're talking some like kind of Southern-ish, soulish food at a very reasonable price for the amount I eat. And usually if it's hot, guys, and it's fresh, it ain't bad. So we're gonna get there momentarily. We're gonna have some fun. I love the corral. Specifically, I'm gonna eat some fried chicken. I'm gonna have some catfish. That's what I desire. I've been in the north for too long. I haven't had those nice essentials, essential items. So, uh, Alex, ready for the corral? Oh, man. So let's get <laughs> her done. Real quick before we get into some sexy looking food, I'd like to thank sponsors of this video being Adam and Eve, adamandeve.com. With 20% of profits going to fight the spread of HIV worldwide, 24 seven customer service, they are your number one stop for all your adult needs. And in fact, 2021 is actually Adam and Eve's 50th anniversary. So go to adamandeve.com, use the code Joel50 to get 50% off one item and free shipping to the US and Canada. Some exclusions apply. Even Gus likes toys. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we're here at the Golden Corral. Now if you're not familiar, I am a long-standing fan of the Golden Corral. Why? Well, because when the food is hot, when the food is fresh, it is very good food. Yes, I said very good. And it really is. The majority of the items are really good when they're hot and fresh. Admittingly, when they're not hot and fresh, the food is very lackluster. That being said, Golden Corral, you're not sponsoring me, but please do. I would love to get a sponsorship. I will rep Golden Corral all day, every day. I swear to God, Golden Corral, you are the ever-living bomb, and I do like you a lot. That being said, back to the uh, reality of our meal. So I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Alex, a Miami resident, and we are in Miami. Um, we are at a Golden Corral very close to the airport, and this was a newer Golden Corral like I showed at the beginning of the video. It was absolutely massive. And uh, thank God for Florida, Florida being quite open. Um, you know, you were, this buffet was operating as a buffet, which was really, really nice. Whereas a lot of the other golden corrals in the country are off for, are, are uh, operating as a more counter service or a cafeteria style where the uh, employees serve you. Here, you're able to serve yourself, which is really, really cool. I think that is a really, like it is an essential experience of a buffet. Um, and maybe essential is too strong of a word, but it really does add to it when you can serve yourself. So I started off with some delicious vegetable salads. I had a nice pickled green bean, like bean salad. I had some coleslaw, and then I had uh, my favorite vegetables, which are good green peppers. I had some lovely little tomatoes. And I kind of use the uh, like the fancier salads, like the coleslaw and that bean salad, as a dressing on top of the green peppers and tomatoes. I love vegetables. I eat lots of vegetables, and I eat lots of meat when I go to buffet. Those are my preference. And then usually I finish off with a little bit of dessert. I usually don't choose breads and pastas and potatoes because those are not my preference. <laughs> So on this plate, I had a glazed chicken, uh, which I just showed you there, and then I had some meatloaf, I had some pulled pork, and I had the fried chicken. I also had a little bit of a sweet potato casserole. So to start off, the glazed chicken was pretty good. It was kind of like a pineapple or something like that. It wasn't an item that I've seen at Golden Crowd to my recollection prior, so I tried it, and overall, I liked it. It was very unique and pretty good. <laughs> This was the sweet potato casserole. It's definitely an item I get uh, quite frequently, not in ever large volume, but it's sweet potatoes with like brown sugar, granola, and uh, some delicious uh, marshmallows on top as well. It's a very like sweet dish, but what I love about the sole, the southern um, cooking with sweet potato casseroles is they are considered an actual like side dish. It's not a dessert, it's like a side dish, like a potato dish. 
I then had um, the pulled pork. The pulled pork here is one of my favorite items and habitually is. Now, as long as the pulled pork is the smoked pulled pork. Out of all my Golden Crow visits, one time I went and the pulled pork was not smoked at all. It was just kind of like a, I don't know, call it more like a braised pulled pork. And didn't enjoy that as much, but I love smoked meats. I love barbecue and the pulled pork's good. But like it, it can. In addition to the pulled pork, I also had a small piece of their meatloaf. Um, their meatloaf, again, an item which I normally get a couple pieces of. It's habitually very, very good. It's a standardized item, with the exception of sometimes I notice it has ketchup on it, and sometimes it has gravy on it. Today, it had gravy on it. Um, but again, sometimes in certain locations, I think it's location dependent, they put ketchup on the uh, on the meatloaf, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, the pulled pork, meatloaf, both solid items, especially the pulled pork, one of my absolute favorites. And now let's get to one of my other absolute favorites, being the fried chicken. But yes, meatloaf, pulled pork, fried chicken, definitely good items you can't go wrong with the Golden Corral. And now to the beautiful fried chicken. It's beautiful. <laughs> I got some, gotta, gotta get some, uh... I have a really nice pair of hopefully juicy breasts. I do love breasts, guys. Two makes, or two is better than one always, so. Cheers to breasts. <laughs> And I really do love me some good breasts and some good thighs. I mean, oh, I just love to sink my teeth in them, get my hands on them chicken breasts and thighs. Chicken breasts and thighs. Love them. I really do. Um, I love fried chicken. And how I eat my fried chicken? Well, I eat it with an exuberant and a crazy amount of hot sauce, and I also uh, like it with ketchup. And additionally, sometimes, um, if I don't have enough hot sauce, ketchup comes out. And sometimes, if you don't have... Well, you just you gotta have hot sauce with your fried chicken. It's absolutely delicious. But I do like the ketchup on it a lot as well. And in fact, kind of missing mixing the ketchup and the hot sauce gives a really nice sweet and spicy flavor. Um, some Golden Corrals I noticed will like just give you a whole bottle of hot sauce. Here they did not. Um, so we did ask for the ketchup and the hot sauce, which they had little packets. Totally cool. Totally fine. It was a Texas Pete hot sauce, um, which is pretty good. It's a pretty solid hot sauce. I have no real complaints. Uh, I think overall my favorite is a Louisiana style. I really like like Cristal, even just a standard Louisiana or the knockoff Louisiana but let me know down below right now guys what is your favorite hot sauce like seriously there's a lot out there even Frank's and I don't just put that stuff on everything I put all hot sauce right in my mouth I just drink that stuff but let me know down below what's your favorite hot sauce and by the way if you like hot sauce hit that like button guys like the video really appreciate that helps keep me motivated helps keep me going for some videos so uh, yeah if you like it so far hit that like button and like I said what is your favorite hot sauce. So for my next plate, so I went with, some, again, some of the tried and true items. We had the lovely pulled pork. I had some veggies. Veggies are always good to, to go for. And I had some catfish, guys. Catfish is the other Golden Corral favorite, the other consistently amazing item at Golden Corral. So, so far, we have the pulled pork. We have the fried chicken. We have the catfish and the meatloaf. Again, it's always good. I don't. I wouldn't put it quite as highly on my list as the pulled pork, the catfish, and the fried chicken but all delicious. And what I will say is Golden Corral has amazing tartar sauce for their uh, catfish. I mean, I mean, I guess you could eat it with other things, but absolutely delicious, delicious tartar sauce. So whether you want um, hot sauce with your catfish or tartar sauce, which are both excellent choices, I would definitely recommend it. The uh, catfish kind of is like a cornmeal, like a grit, ish in the batter um, just a little bit of pepper it's very light uh, it's very crisp it's it's really delicious um, so like I said having some of that pulled pork um, again a favorite of mine uh, usually they have a barbecue sauce up there um, by the pulled pork or somewhere available if not ask for it they'll give you a bottle the staff will up by the counter uh, which my favorite is the smokehouse usually they have a couple ones I think one's called a smoky one's called a sweet and it's called a smokehouse the smokehouse one is very very good put that on the pulled pork enjoy it love it live it as long as it's the smoke pulled pork I had some green beans green beans are always pretty consistent um, they do have a little bit of a pork in them um, kind of like it's like they're cooked in a little bit of a broth um, like some kind of a broth or like a porky broth 
Um, now, admittingly, you know, the green beans are generally a bit overcooked. They're not al dente. Um, but the broccoli is, the steamed broccoli, in my experience, is often cooked very, very properly. It is definitely al dente. It's crisp. I also had some of the carrots. Carrots are like a buttered carrot. Um, they're not bad. Again, they're going to be quite soft as they're sitting in liquid for an extended period of time. So if you like al dente vegetables, probably not, you, the carrot, not, carrot should not be your choice either. But like I said, that broccoli, the cauliflower is usually very crisp. And if anything, I've had a couple times where it's very firm still. Um, but like I said, it's kind of the thing with the buffet. There's a little bit of hit and miss. There's a little bit of variation with the exception of the uh, my personal favorite items that I've mentioned. So hitting this catfish, guys, with that hot sauce. So good. I love hot sauce, guys. Like, I literally just drink it out of the packet. Um, like, literally, literally there's, there's no shame in that. But like I said, that tartar sauce. This is actually one of the first times that I had the tartar sauce with the catfish at Golden Corral. Yes, I know it sounds kind of funny, um, but it's really, really good. And I just otherwise generally would have it with ketchup and or hot sauce. Both good pairings, but that tartar sauce is so dang good. Um, but yeah, like I said, catfish and the, the fried chicken were two items that I really wanted to get down here at Golden Corral. And so far, I was being satisfied very much. Um, next plates going on here had some more fried chicken of course had some delicious uh, green beans had a little bit of their uh, bean salad as well and I had some a little bit of like a, I'll call it like a taco bowl ish like I had a taco without a taco so I had a pile of pico de gallo and a pile of ground beef a taco station is not something I always see at Golden Corral's um, and I will admit it's not generally my favorite item, but I thought I'd give it a try. Um, you know, I've had it in the past and it was always pretty mediocre, but I thought I'd give it a go again. And really, I just kind of wanted to eat some pico de gallo. I uh, was coming straight from Mexico, like literally Alex picked me up from the airport, um, which I like flew from uh, Merida, Mexico to Miami. And basically we went straight to Golden Corral. So I had to kind of relive a little bit of my Mexican, uh, we'll say cuisine in my meal. Um, so again, having some more of those uh, vegetables, some more of that bean salad. Before, I was going to head into the good old fried chicken, uh, which I very much already spoke on. And as you know, I you know where I very much stand. I, uh, the only other a new addition on that plate was I had some of their broccoli, or uh, sorry, a carrot slaw, um, which is kind of like a coleslaw but made with carrots now the slight difference is there is raisins in it so it adds a little bit of sweetness which is pretty unique and in the dressing in the carrot slaw it's like it reminds me of what I would call mayonnaise and then mixed with a little bit of mustard but like just the tiniest tiniest bit um, definitely it's generally a lot sweeter and richer so again you're getting like the carrots the mayonnaise and uh, really the um, kind of like again that sweetness from the raisins. Um, this was uh, Alex as we just cheers our chicken there. He was uh, I think this was his first time really trying the Golden Corral fried chicken, and we both agreed it's pretty dang solid. Like really, there's no complaints, and the fact that you can get all you can eat fried chicken any time of the day basically. I mean, I doubt you can at breakfast, although I've never been at breakfast, so I don't know. But you know, at lunch or dinner for most of the day, get all you can eat fried chicken for like ranging from ten to fifteen dollars across the country. That's absolutely insane. And let's do a quick check-in. If you're watching to this point, first off, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you watching, and I really appreciate the support and you not skipping. So let's play a trick on them skippers, guys. We've done this before. It was absolutely hilarious. So comment down below, that lady should not have worn white pants. Or, I can't believe that lady worn white pants. Her poor white pants. And let's just envision what on earth could have happened to that poor lady's white pants. Ugh, just ugh, that image. I don't even want to know. But guys, comment down below. It's always so fun when we do this. So thank you. Which brings us back to our next plate. So again, I had some more of that delicious fried chicken. I had some more of the delicious catfish with that delicious tartar sauce. Yes, guys, there's going to be a lot of delicious in this video. Uh, pulled pork and the tomatoes and green peppers. With I had a little bit of a, um, they called it like a Catalina dressing. Kind of like a fat-free, um, uh, what do you call that? What's that red dressing? French dressing. Kind of like a fat-free French dressing. We also had um, some more uh, friends and subscribers join us. It was awesome. I did advertise that we were going to be here at Golden Corral, and uh, it was always great 
and I always encourage people to come on by. You know, I love meeting people and I always welcome it. So how can you stay up to date on my travels? Well, definitely first my YouTube community tab. If you go to my page, click on community, you'll be able to see my community tab. Additionally, those posts should show up on your homepage if you're subscribed with that bell notification. Next is my Instagram. First off, the link is down below in the description so you can click that up, open that up in a new tab right now so you don't forget and you'll be able to follow that after the video. Um, and or, I mean, technically, if you wanna follow me now on there and hop on back you're more than welcome uh, but definitely don't want to miss the end of this video we have some more delicious eating uh, and then my Facebook page so so you already have YouTube guys if you're subscribed you're gonna get the notifications on your home page if you are following me on Instagram you're gonna see my stories you're gonna be able to see my posts for my big trips then my Facebook page guys link is also down in the description i um, definitely click on that link I'm not only posting three videos a week on my Facebook page yes that's right guys three videos a week being posted on that Facebook page um, but that I'll also post my travel updates and I post like my events um, so if you go back you'll be able to scroll through and see some of my previous events and um, but yeah basically you'll be able to see all my events through one of those means and or all of them the more you follow the like quicker you're going to get to um, get the travel updates um, sometimes I'll like do the YouTube first and then the Facebook will follow um, sometimes I'll I'll, admittingly sometimes I only get to post on one or two if it's kind of less last minute so definitely follow those there you'll be able to know when I'm in your city when I'm in your area and definitely reach out if I ever am like I said I more than welcome uh, people to come hang out um, I love to see things and I love to meet all the people so I get to eat great food I love to hang out with great people and you are one of those people so like I said whenever in the area feel free to reach out because we basically just had like an awesome hangout here. Like it was basically just like friends hanging out, which was absolutely wicked. Um, you know, we got to, like I said, we got to eat good food, had good company. There was no complaints absolutely about it. It was just, it was awesome. This was a great time. Um, again, huge thanks to the girls for coming out. Huge thanks to Alex for helping, uh, you know, facilitate this. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, no complaints. And every time, like everybody I meet off of YouTube, guys, you guys are so fantastic. I love you so much. You know, the support you guys show me on YouTube, off YouTube, all the above. I really love having you as my friends. I really love having you in the Happy Healthy Hungry family. And I truly, like I said, I really appreciate the support. Um, people help host me when I come to areas, help us get around. And like I said, I love you. I really do. So to have a kind of few last items um, and try a few different items than I did previously. Again, I had some of the catfish, which was very, you know, I had a dozen times. Um, but then I actually got a little piece of steak. The steak, I've had at Golden Corral a number of times. It's hit or miss. They, uh, like, cook it on the, like it's, it's a, what do you call it? It's like an action station. Like, they cook it like live in the moment so it's not just sitting in a hot tray um and you know so you can ask for it like rare medium rare well done etc um but sometimes i feel that people are a little more accurate than others i asked for my steak to be like medium rare and the gentleman handed me this piece um which you'll see kind of what it looks like um i'll let you be yourself in regards i don't really think it was medium rare myself but i had some of those buttered carrots prior and the steaks they're not bad it's like a sirloin uh, like a cheaper sirloin cut um it's like i said it really depends i've had them uh, a couple times where i was like you know this is actually really really good again considering this is an all-you-can-eat buffet um, i'm not complaining just in this time this steak was definitely not as good as uh some of the other times which i had the um the steak there um, again, pulled pork guys, love it, absolutely love that stuff. Uh, like I said, the extra smoky bit ends with that little bit of barbecue sauce, oh, just so dang good. But besides that, I had some pineapple, and then I had some uh, cottage cheese actually. Um, cottage cheese was something I had in uh, I, had, I had in the south a while back, and I was kind of like, yeah, I'll have some cottage cheese, and it kind of reminded me of Mexico. I had an apple salad in Mexico, which kind of reminded me of cottage cheese, so I figured, hey, well, why the heck not? 
So pineapple is undoubtedly one of my favorite fruits. I absolutely love it, and when it's ripe, it is, I think, probably one of the best tasting things on earth. Um, this pineapple was tasting really good, and generally the fruits being pineapples, sometimes strawberries, grapes, melons, is another item I do get at Golden Corral. I love, again, all these items, and they are technically one of the more expensive items. Again, not that I'm ta chasing expensive items per se, but I'm tasting my preference. And at the time, although I wanted something a little sweet, um, I didn't want to go too heavy on the calories because I already went really heavy on the calories. So I was going for some fruit as a sweeter dessert. Um, and I was going to go really, really light on the rest of the desserts compared to normal how I do. <laughs> So dessert today was, not going to lie, they had a very limited selection. We've been here for a long time, and uh, it was getting a little later, so they stopped stocking things quite as promptly as they did. So I had some chocolate-covered Rice Krispies. This is not something I would normally get, and just as I expected, it was very lackluster. I mean, they're just mediocre Rice Krispies dipped in the fondue. Uh, the, with the COVID, the current situation, you were not allowed to actually use the fondue station. So if you wanted any of the chocolate dipped strawberries or anything chocolate dipped, they were already pre-dipped. I then had some of the banana pudding, which normally the banana pudding at the Golden Corral is very, very, very good. This one was either A, not prepared properly or had just been sitting out in like, like the warmth too long because it was just, it didn't have its proper texture. I had a cookie because, well, it was there. Uh, it was again mediocre. So not going to lie, compared to normal, where they have some of my favorites, such as the chocolate cream pie, the coconut cream pie, and good banana pudding, today the desserts were very lackluster and not great, but the rest of the experience was very, very enjoyable. So with that, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, stay happy, healthy, hungry, and of course, till next time, happy eating. Overdone. I think it's good for me tonight, so till next time, everybody. And look at the water! It is very not calm today, but it's very beautiful. But uh, but at the same time, that's a nice view right there. It's like Jesus. Oh. In oceans deep, my faith will stand. And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm still in Mexico, my last night here guys And I was at Walmart, there's so many cool, like unique items that obviously you can get here that you can't get you know, in Canada and America, etc. One being Carlos V, at least I've never seen it So Carlos V is a chocolate bar um, they also have like the, the chocolate chocolate bar, if that makes sense, like the milk chocolate bar. Then there is a white version as well, the Blanco, the white variant, which I have tried. I tried the white one. It's just like white chocolate. Um, so yeah, but this is the cereal. They had a couple other different cool cereals at Walmart. This is one that I picked up, a smaller box. I figured I would give it a go. So let's try it. So the, my first impression is that it's chocolate flaky things. Um, and the ingredient is like the main ingredient is corn, uh, and then the second ingredient is sugar. But the first ingredient is corn. So a corn cereal would be like Captain Crunch. Oh wow, look, silver, silver foil bag. That's interesting, these two plastic bags. Hmm, okay. So I'm not getting a lot of chocolate smell, to be honest. Like when you crack open a thing of, let's say like chocolate Rice Krispies or Count Chocula, when that was a thing, or Nesquik. Nesquik's good. You just smell a lot of chocolate. This doesn't have a strong, like, it's not chocolatey scent. It's a pretty neutral scent, to be honest. So they definitely look like they do on the box. They're like little half cuppy 
things will go and stuck on my finger. It looks like a bug. But yeah, like little half cups. Um, they are, oops, they are kind of glazed, a little shiny. That'll refocus. Uh, glazed, shiny little cups. I'll try one dry. Oh, okay. Not what I was expecting at all. Nope, not at all what I was expecting. Still not what I was expecting. All right. So dry, the flavor I get, the first taste I got, first flavor was corn pops. Like, I guess it's corn, it kind of makes sense. But corn pops, first scent, or first uh, taste, which probably also makes sense of that smell. Cause like I said, it was kind of like, it wasn't much to it, but corn pops, and then as I ate a couple, I got like a five to 10% Nesquik aftertaste. So mostly corn pops with five to 10% chocolate. Let's try it with some milk. I got light, AKA reduced fat, no lactose milk which all the milk in Mexico that I've seen at least is coming ultra pasteurized. So it's available on the counter, like on the shelf. Um, I did cool mine off just because that's what I'm more accustomed to. I actually do prefer the taste of lactose free milk as well. It's actually a bit sweeter um, cause your disaccharide, which is lactose is already broken down into monosaccharides. If you don't know what that means, that's all right. All right, so let's try some of this in the good old bowl. The white bowl will very much allow for the visibility of that dark cereal. So yeah, kind of uh, it looks exactly like it did on my finger and in the bag. I don't know guys, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for some more chocolate, I'll be honest. I got them thinking it'd be chocolatey and don't, I like corn pops, but if I wanted corn pops, I'd go for corn pops. So let's hope that this adds a little bit more chocolatiness as they get wet. And there you go, that's what they look like, wet. Everybody likes to be wet. All right, so been here for probably, I would say 10 seconds. I do see that milk, hold on, let's see. How can I show you this without, you see that milk is, I don't wanna spill. The milk is turning a little chocolatey. So I'll try it quick. Okay. I'm definitely getting more chocolate now. Mmm. 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 Much better. Um, there you go. You guys can see the chocolatey-ish milk. So I'm definitely getting more chocolate. The extra sweetness of the milk is doing it a favor. Because believe it or not, for a cereal which is literally composed of like, mm, literally composed of about, actually wait, that's only about, only about 25% sugar? No. No, never mind. 50. For, yeah, 50. 50? Yes. No. Okay, guys, hold on. I'm having difficulty reading, reading my Spanish labeling. Because it doesn't make sense. Oh, that's what's not. Okay, okay, okay gotcha, yeah. All right, that made sense. The one, the one call must show me with milk. I'm going without milk. So yeah, for a cereal, which is comprised of 25% sugar, I was expecting it to be sweeter initially. Although 25% sugar for a breakfast, like a child's children's cereal actually isn't the highest. A lot of them are up at like 50% or maybe even higher. The s'more cereals, like 50% sugar. Um, 
Sugar Crisp definitely is more. A lot of them are. So it's actually, like I said, the additional sweetness of that milk, especially lactose-free milk, that sugariness. Mmm. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. That last mouthful. Mmm. With that milk. That was that was good. So yeah, it started off really bad, really plain. The milk transformed it. That little bit of extra sweetness definitely helped. And as we got the mix and the coagulation of the sweetness and the milkiness, it definitely helped. So Carlos V, what I recommend, it wouldn't be my first choice. I'd give it like a, without milk, like a three or four out of 10 with milk about a six. So it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot better. If you want chocolate, I would stick with Nesquik um, or one of the other chocolatey cereals. I like chocolate Rice Krispies. Chocolate Rice Krispies or Nesquik definitely trumps this. But hey, when in Mexico, gotta try it out. So enjoy guys. Carlos V, now we know. Hi everyone, officially leaving Merida. It was a beautiful trip, loved it here. I will definitely be back. At that, I have no complaints. That's about it, you know? Have a lovely flight, wish me luck, but we'll have a lovely life. I'm gonna enjoy a very spacious, very spacious flight. So yeah, it's a short one, it's only about an hour and a half, but off to Miami we go. Merida, Mexico, thank you so much. I will be back in about two weeks. Yes, that's right, I'm going back to Mexico, so. Till next time. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right, click my face, subscribe guys. It helps me out, it helps you out, then you don't miss an upload, and hopefully I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically pick two videos, yes, that's right, two videos specifically for you, right here. So click a video right now, get that going, and it's gonna end, so click one quick. Let's go, let's go, and have a great day.